we're going to continue our conversation with women on the move today. And we're going to talk with Jasmine Andrews, who is the author of Salit Bride. Welcome to the show today, Ms. Andrews. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. As I read a little bit about your book, it is definitely intriguing. You know, you take a topic that we have all heard about, the classic story of Adam and Eve, and you spin it around just a little bit. And so we're going to talk about that spin that you have put on this classic biblical uh, story. But first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself, Jasmine. Well, I was born and raised in Chesapeake, uh, graduated from Hampton University. Uh, I've always been writing for a long time. I was mostly writing fiction. And then I started writing this essay because I was somewhat upset about some of the stuff that was going on in congregations where you hear pastors talking about, oh, well, the last time a man listened to a woman, look what happened. And he's almost enforcing and in teaching the community to undermine women, don't listen to them, women lead you astray. And then slowly this essay turned into a book because it just more and more stuff started coming out of it. And then I just looked up and realized there was an entire book, Sully Pride. Well, you know, it's amazing how this really formed then. You know, this formed just out of hearing something that uh, motivated you to do a little more study, a little more research. And you actually applied a mathematics a formula. Right. To this research? Uh, because a lot of math is based on just straightforward logic, the if-then scenario. If this is true, then this is the result. And so I just applied that to the very illogical stuff that was being presented sometimes, that if Adam was in charge, then how is it Eve's fault that he ate the fruit? Mm -hmm. So just using that format, then it's just it doesn't make sense and something something was missing so I had to dig deeper and then that's when I discovered. Well I'm glad you did. I'm glad you were motivated to dig a little bit deeper because sometimes we have to explore topics that we just accept yes. as being the way it is without really asking that what if question. Right. And so um, I, I really like the, as I said before, not the spin as much as just the forward thinking, the visionary thinking that you've applied to this story. I think we all know the classic story, but just in case there's someone listening who may not know the, the story, please talk about the story as most people interpret it and know it. Right. So most people interpret that um, God gave Adam the commandment, don't eat from this tree of good and evil, mm -hmm. or you will surely die. And then uh, the woman, Eve, was deceived by the snake, ate the fruit, and then gave it to her husband. To which her husband said, well, this woman you gave to be with me gave me the fruit, so I ate. And then people have accepted that, well, yeah, because if it wasn't for the woman, you know, we'd be in paradise, death wouldn't exist, and everything would be wonderful. And people have literally accepted that as a truth, ignoring the fact that Adam was in sin when he said that, and sinners lie, sinners blame others for their actions, and sinners don't accept responsibility. So it's almost like taking the mental state of maybe like a 12-year-old boy and applying it to how we build our society. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, you're always looking for that scapegoat. Especially yes. when something bad happens. You know, it's not your fault. Someone else did it. Or someone else made you do it. Or the circumstances were responsible and not free choice. Right. And you propose that with Adam being right there with Eve, when, uh, you know, when the snake was providing that temptation, he had free will to say no. Right. He, he did. Adam always had a choice. And just given that... It says in Genesis 3, 6, she gave the fruit to her husband who was with her, which means that he was standing there the entire time, witnessed the snake deceive her, and didn't say anything. Didn't intervene. Because if someone you love is in danger, and you know that someone's lying to them, and they're about to eat the fruit of death, and you don't say anything, it's just a sign that like you really could care less, and perhaps maybe you even wanted them to eat the fruit of death. Mm -hmm. You were setting up a scenario, yes, uh, you know, for their demise, in essence. 